My new truck is here. Can you see it? Can you see it? It's way down there. Getting my aerobics in for the day. It finally stopped raining. It's been raining for probably two weeks straight here in Florida. <laughs> I haven't given you guys a weather report, but man, every day. And there was like a 48 hour period where it was just like raining nonstop, like hard raining nonstop, like not drizzling, just raining. It was, it was rough. So those of you who've been around for a while probably have an idea as to what this truck is for and why we bought it. But that's only half the reason. So basically there, there's, there's two stages to this project. There's an immediate use and then a, the long-term plan. So for those of you who are new here, this is my current truck. So I bounced around from trucks a bit. I had no OY Duramax. I sold that because I bought this Dodge with my Inkles trailer and then I sold that. And then I bought this. It's just one of those things, deal pops up, you buy it, you sell this, you trade that. And, and this is kind of where we landed. I really like this truck because it looks sweet. It's a 99, so it's got a 7.3 power stroke in it. It's on 24 inch Alcoa semi wheels. It's got a 6.0, like later 6.0 front end on it. So it's got the 6.0 bumper, grill, headlights. It's got a cow hood. It's a really neat truck and I really like this truck. And we've put a lot of time into it recently. It had crazy boost leaks when I got it and was super underpowered and gutless. So I fixed those, resealed the plenums. I got that done. And then the oil temps were crazy high when I was towing my big trailer and we went through and did redid the cooling system. And we've been working out the kinks and you know, it's a pretty nice truck. It's got some dings and scratches and rock chips, but the interior is nice and you know, it's a good truck. It's really not a terrible truck. And I thought about going down the road of upgrading this truck, doing a bigger turbo and injectors and trying to quiet it down some inside because you know, I go to events kind of all around the country and I want to go do more next season. And one of those trips that I make every month it, during the season is to Texas. And I missed the last two kind of because of this truck. Cause it's kind of like right before, you know, I'm planning on whether I'm going to go or not. I end up finding some issue with this truck and I, I really don't want to risk driving a thousand miles and it breaking down. And then on top of that, you know, it's an older truck. The seven threes are not super powerful. You know, it doesn't necessarily struggle to pull my trailer, but you know, it is, it is kind of tiring. You, you know, you hit hills, you got to make sure you're going the right speed. Otherwise you're going to lose 15, 20 miles an hour. And you know, it's kind of just a, it's just an older truck. Like that truck was made back when trucks were just work tools. Nowadays we got trucks that people don't ever tow anything with. They're just like luxury trucks. So the, the market has kind of shifted. And that was back when things, trucks were just rudimentary. They were noisy. The 7.3s are really loud engine. That was before they quieted diesels down. And there's a bunch of stuff to it. I won't get into everything until we get to this phase of the project, but basically, long story short, we're gonna be selling that truck. We're gonna keep the wheels off it. We're gonna be building another dually, um, but it's gonna be a newer truck. It's gonna be engine swapped. We're gonna do air ride. It's gonna be a really cool, big project. We're gonna try to knock it out quick but obviously we're not going to be able to get it done in a couple weeks it's probably going to be a, at least a month or two projects so that's where this truck comes in so i bought this truck so i can tow my open trailer around while i'm building the diesel truck and we'll just leave the enclosed parked tow my open go to all my events still the season's kind of winding down anyway so it'll be mostly in-state stuff so that's what we're going to use this for and then once we get the diesel truck built the plan is to do a turbo LS bill on that. So that's where those of you who've been watching for a while probably already knew that that was the plan. I've been talking about doing this forever. There's always like a project that kind of falls in my lap before I can do it. I almost bought this truck like six, eight months ago. And then my Subaru GC8 with the WRX swap like popped up for sale for super cheap as an unfinished project. And I just had to have it. So I got that and that, you know, kind of took the spot of building this. So I've wanted to do this for a while. I watched the uh, Sloppy Mechanics YouTube channel. He does budget turbo stuff and I've been fascinated by it since and I wanted to do it myself and my plans were either one of these trucks or a C10. The reason I, I was leaning towards one of these trucks especially now that I need something to tow with that kind of cemented the deal but as these trucks are like nice and comfortable they're quiet inside they ride good so this truck turbo like I can daily drive it around as a nice comfortable cruiser and have five six hundred horsepower blow the tires off so that's kind of the plan for this thing it's already got a six liter and a four oh eighty in it which is sick so, I mean, it, it is like the perfect candidate for what we're gonna do. If you guys don't know, the 4L60 is what would normally come in this truck in a 4.8 or a 5.3 liter engine. Um, and the 4L60s weren't very stout. 
Uh, they break a lot, especially when you start turboing them and adding power. So this has a 4080, which are proven to be pretty strong. It's already got a shift kit. We will need to put a torque converter in it, but I mean, the, the truck is pretty set up for what we want to do as it sits right now. So the plan is to turbo it, you know, make five, 600 wheel, and then, you know, who knows from there, maybe build up from there, try to make 800, 1,000, you know. The cool thing about the trucks to me is like you can throw your slicks and your jack and your tools box in the back and go drive it to the drag strip, drag it, and then drive it back. So I'm really excited about this. I've wanted to do this for a long time, and this is like the perfect candidate for it. And I was so glad that my buddy Derek still had it. So he's the one who hit me up. He wasn't really selling it, but he was like, hey man, like if you, you want to do it if you want to buy one of these trucks like i'll sell you mine for a good deal and i really wanted to buy it but i couldn't at the time and then flash forward to six eight months later i'm like there's no way he still has that truck i hit him up sure enough still has it because he wasn't really actively trying to sell it um so he sold it to me i got it shipped from south carolina because it was only 350 bucks and uh yeah so huge shout out to my buddy derek i'll link his youtube channel below he's a really cool guy he has a shop he's helped me so much with ls stuff he you know any questions i have about like putting an LS together or doing anything that I don't know or don't remember, he knows the answer to. So he's the one who basically put this truck together and he's the one who I bought it from. So it was really cool buying it from a friend because it was a really easy transaction. Like I didn't have to worry about, you know, flying out there and getting, giving him the money and getting the title and then getting it shipped or going and getting it myself because I didn't have time. It worked out really well. It worked out really well. It was a great deal. So anyway, single cab short bed, six liter 480. Interior, probably my favorite part. He put the captain's chair setup in it. So these single cabs didn't come like this, but this is what I had in my Duramax. And it's the captain's chairs with the fold down armrest. It's got the center console um, set up with the cubby bins and the cup holders. I really, really like this interior setup the most. It's got some sort of gauge cluster. I don't know if they normally come with a trans temp gauge on the 1500s. I feel like this is like out of a 2500. Kind of cool. It's got, they had the faces redone. It's got a nice like sub and amp and component speakers and a bunch of other stuff like that. So it's got a nice sound system in it. The truck itself is a little beat up, which is kind of perfect for me. I, you know, I, I like having stuff that's not perfect because then I don't feel as bad if like it gets dinged or dent and I, I can use it without worrying about that. So, oh, it comes with an HD hood. So you can see how that it's kind of, it's almost like a cow hood. So that's like a 2500 truck hood. So it comes with one of those so we can get that painted, clean the truck up, get it painted if we want to. You know, it'll just kind of depend, but it's it's a really good base. Let me pop the hood for what we want to do. I mean, it couldn't be a better base. A six liter with a freaking 480. I mean, that's like a thousand horsepower combo right there with a good turbo. So kind of gives us unlimited potential, so. Obviously the engine doesn't look like much in a truck because it comes in here, but it is really nice how much room you have in a truck. Like you can see the manifolds down there. Like we have all the room in the world to work on it, to put build a turbo setup. I mean, literally room for freaking days. Now we contrast that with my Miata here. <laughs> like check out how much room we have in my LS Miata. Such minimal room, which you know, this isn't even that bad, but you know, I'm so used to working with cars with LSs and you're just so limited. You have to, everything has to be meant to fit and you can't really mix and match parts because like these mounts won't work with these headers. And it's just very, uh, very intricate and you don't have a lot of room. You don't have a lot of leeway to work with. Whereas something like this, I TIG weld and I've been progressing at that. And you know, I can comfortably easily build my own turbo manifold, build my own intercooler piping and, I'm really, really excited about the turbo aspect of this project. I, like I said, I've been wanting to do it for a very, very long time. And, and now we kind of kill two birds with one stone. We have a temporary tow rig while we build our next tow rig and get rid of the dually because I don't want to keep that while I'm building this other tow rig because I want to free up the funds from it to put into the next truck and take the wheels off it and do all that. And I don't want to risk like messing it up before I sell it. So I just want to sell it, take that money, put it into the next truck and use this in the meantime. So this should be a really cool build. We'll obviously lower it probably and put some cool wheels and tires on it. And there's a lot of potential. There's a lot of ways this can go, but at a minimum it's gonna get a turbo setup that'll make five, 600 wheel and be a freaking sick truck to drive around. We can go pick up engines or whatever we need to do, whatever we need a truck for and blow the tires off going 60 miles an hour if we want to. So it should be really, really cool. But for right now, it's gonna be a tow rig to tow my open trailer around. So. That is the plan. We have a grid life this weekend. We need to get this thing set up to be our tow brake. So I need to get this hitch flipped around. So it's kind of a raised hitch because I think the height of the back of the truck, I'll need that with the trailer. So 
get this flipped around and get it on the truck. Broke loose without twisting the ball too much. Oh, no, just kidding. Jeez, why is this so rough? It's like the threads are toast on this thing. I guess maybe it's just the lock washer. Yeah, because it's loose now. That was just pretty wild. I think that's good. All right, next thing I wanna do is throw this brake controller in it. I'm just gonna plug it in and see if it's gonna work uh, before I mount it. So I got this adapter harness. I have one, I have this one from the Ford, and then I bought this one for Chevy. It's pretty dope. They're like 10 bucks for the adapter harness, no cutting and splicing, and I can switch it between trucks if I need to. So let's go see if it'll work. I gotta figure out where this plug goes So, All right, so it looks like this is our junction box where it's gonna plug into. Just gotta get this guy off. Okay, that was easy enough. I think it goes right up here. Yep, there we go. Yeah, we got power. Should say no trailer connected. Okay, well it's definitely working. So, I'm gonna put this cover back on. All right, let's go hook up to the trailer. at the right angle. Oh no, fire ants. Oh God, there's fire ants everywhere. Let's get this thing out. Oh, it works! If you guys saw my trailer, ah, fire ants. If you guys saw my trailer video, um, I hooked the brakes up and they weren't working on the Ford. Um, but what's weird is the brakes on this trailer worked on the Ford with this brake controller, but the plug goes into the bed with this trailer and the plug on this trailer is going into the bumper. So I was assuming that was the problem Seems like it is, because the brakes seem to be working. We'll find out when we pull this thing up the hill. was dragging the brakes all the way up so still got something weird basically it was like my glasses are so fogged up one second I'm pulling this key basically the brake controller when I did like the test manual override it, it worked and then they just stayed on so then I disconnected it and then it was okay I plugged it back in it said zero but then it must have powered them again when I hit the brakes and it's just staying on. So I gotta figure out what's going on there. So I'm gonna tinker with that for a minute. But I mean, it, it works. The brakes on the trailer are working. 
the controller's reading them and all of that. We just have some sort of weird issue going on. So, it, it, by the way, this is the humidity in Florida. I was in that truck for 15 seconds, 20 seconds driving and just the AC from the truck cooling my glasses off, they are completely fogged up. So, I realize the brake controller, can you guys see the numbers on there? So it's not getting signal from the brake pedal like it should. Oh, that's weird, it just shut off. Okay, anyway, but if I turn the lights on, now the brakes have power. So that tells me that the signal wire that should be going to the brake pedal is going to a light switch. So those wires run into this box. I gotta take this brace off so I can pull this plastic housing off because there's like some ring terminal posts in here and stuff like that. So I pull this thing off and figure out where that signal wire is running to. Plug this, what happens? Okay, now it says no trailer connected. So, this is basically, I'm assuming, direct to our trailer, and this is, I believe, our power to our brake controller. So, I think that's correct. It said it's supposed to go to this post and it's supposed to go here. So, okay, let's try something else. Let's look somewhere else. Okay, I think I figured out our problem and it is not up here. So, the trailer wire plugs in to this area right here. So, looking at the wires, this red one is the signal to the brake controller from the brake pedal. But, I check that pin that it's going into and that pin gets power when I turn the lights on. This pin down here, bottom left area, gets power when I press the brakes. So I think if I switch this red wire to this bottom left pin slot, it'll work. Let's try it. Ah, there we go. Now it's coming on with brakes. So that's what it was. I just needed to switch those pins. So I'm gonna try to go drive it around. I think this one is like an inertia and pedal. So it, it changes the voltage based on like how fast you're going. So let's try it. Let's get this hooked back up. All right, check it out, ready? Can you see it? So we're getting full voltage when we're actually coming to a stop hard and then it tapers off. Hell yeah, they're working great! Oh, I'm so happy! I've basically never had working trailer brakes on this trailer and now, especially towing this trailer behind a gas truck, like I really wanted, you know, a 1500, I really wanted to get the trailer brakes working because, you know, the brakes on this truck aren't anywhere near as big and powerful as, as a three quarter ton or a one ton. So anyway, really, really excited that that's working. I already checked all the other lights. All of them work. The trailer's at the right angle with this trailer hitch. Ooh, this thing will just break the tires loose with the little trailer. So now I just need to properly mount the brake controller, figure out where I want to mount it, get it mounted up. And uh, yeah, the next step will be going to the DMV, getting this thing registered so we can put a car on the trailer, go fill this thing up with gas because it is uh, low on fuel and uh, see how she tows with the car. So I'm really excited. Uh, so let's get this brake controller mounted. Let me scoot it over just a little bit so we can pull the brake controller in and out. Yeah, there we go. It's about perfect. The only tricky thing is the way this bracket attaches. It's got these little screws and in typical areas where you'd want to mount a brake controller, really hard to get to the screws. It's like this on the Ford too. All right, let's go find a little wrench for this guy. All right, sweet, got that done. So I just need to run this wire up and out of the way, zip tie it up there so it's not hitting the brake controller or hitting the brake pedal rather. Boom! Wire is nice and tucked. Brake controller is on and popping. Good to go. That went super well. Really, really happy about that. I'm glad to finally have trailer brakes working on this thing and all the lights work. Everything's good. This trailer is freaking ready for our trip to grid life, so I'm stoked. So I gotta go move this thing out of the way to start in the morning and then we can continue on.
kind of forgot that this is an out-of-state title vehicle and in Florida if it's out-of-state title you have to take it to the DMV for them to check the VIN so we're going to the DMV in the morning we're just gonna take it on the trailer because it's about 30 minutes away looks funny seeing a truck on my trailer though truck 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 all right we made it back from the dmv without much issue i did get like the worst possible lady she wanted any excuse to not have to do the paperwork for me i set the title down she saw i was out of state and was like oh the vehicle has to be here i'm sorry and i was like uh, it's here i brought it with me and then she was like oh we well, have to have insurance on it i was like i do i have insurance she's like oh well, it has to be on this vehicle it is i've done this before lady uh so anyway we go out to look at the truck because she's got to check the VIN. And I mean, the trailer is like, what, a foot off the ground? Maybe? And she was like, do you have a ladder so I can get up there to check the VIN? I was like, dude, you can step on the trailer. So she goes inside to get this like six inch tall step ladder, still can barely read it. So she, then she's looking at the title and she's like, what is this? And it was like a little tear and it wasn't near any of the information. And I was like, it's a tear. And then, and then she's like, oh, we can't take this. We can't take this. And then she goes and asks her supervisor and her supervisor's like, of course we can take it. There's no information missing. Like, it's not a problem. It was just crazy. Like, normally I have good luck at that one and she just did not want to have to help me. She was hoping that I was missing something that she could just turn me around and send me home so she didn't have to do it. There was like nobody else there. Anyway, just weird. So we have to do a bit of finagling. We got to get the truck off the trailer, get this truck unhooked from the trailer, and then get this truck hooked up to the trailer and then load the Subaru on because that's the easiest car to load and go see how she tows. All right, we got the trailer switched over to the 1500. So I'm gonna go ahead and load the Subaru now. That should be a good one because it'll be pretty heavy, like probably 400 pounds, 300 pounds heavier than the Miata. So that'll simulate some more stuff and uh, definitely the easiest to load because of ride height. So we got the Subaru on the trailer, strapped down, ready to go. So let's go for the first tow with the old regular cab short bed. See how it does. A little bumpy through here. Gotta maintain some speed to get her up the hill. Definitely feels like, like it's not struggling at all to tow this though. Like just barely press the throttle to get it moving and up to speed. squeeze through there's like a rut going through our driveway but usually it's oof, a little close to there oh i got my sunglasses with me so we're full of fuel or not full we got fuel we're registered we're insured we're ready to go brake controller is working good like no problem at all like I'm quarter throttle and it's it's excel I mean it honestly feels like it almost might get up to speed quicker with this open trailer than my 7.3 does I mean it is a six liter and a tiny little 4,000 pound truck but I'm curious to see what it's like at speed once we get up here on the main road Now, towing straight, trailer's not really 
bouncing the truck around. So many cops on this road at this time of day. I don't know what the deal is. So we're going 60 right now. I guess we can go 65 because the speedos. I've, every other truck I've ever had, the speedos off by five. So I'm just so used to that. So we'll pick it up to 65 here. So we're running right at 65, at right at 2,000 RPM. I'm selling great. No complaints at all. Nice and quiet in here. The ride's comfortable. The truck's not getting tugged around by the trailer at all. Feels pretty stable. Man, I'm telling you, if you're only towing an open trailer, a gas truck is the way to go. Like, it really is the way to go. This thing is so comfortable. There's like no engine noise. I feel like I have to yell. I'm used to being in the 7.3, but I mean, it's so quiet. I'm barely touching the gas. Everything's working great. I mean, if you really want to have good brakes, get yourself a 2500 so you have the eight lug axles with the bigger brakes. But I mean, the same toes like nothing, like no problem at all. I know Ben, Ben's truck's got a 4.8 in it. He toes all over the freaking place with that thing. We can accelerate up to 70. No problem, it's smooth as glass right now. No shaky shaky. Let's see if it gets weird when we hit the brakes. No, good. Doesn't get squirrely. I'm really glad we got the trailer brakes working. We definitely need the trailer brakes working with this truck. You know, because the brakes on this truck aren't very big. I'm really liking this thing, man. I really am. It drives really nice. Really quiet. So the other cool thing about the Chevys in 1500 the one big benefit to getting a 1500 chevy over to 2500 they're all independent front suspension but the the 1500s have like a different independent front suspension and it's uh they use a rack and pinion so instead of having a steering box and all the slop and stuff associated with the steering box i keep driving too far that way um you just have a rack and pinion because the steering's a lot tighter it's a lot quicker and it's a lot wider it just feels more like driving a car than a big hefty truck. Yeah, no complaints at all right now. I'm ready to take this thing freaking up to Georgia. I have no doubt in my mind it'll do just fine. It's honestly nice having the short bed. It's so easy to see the trailer back there. Like I can look behind me and see exactly where the trailer is. Coming to this parking lot to see kind of how it was maneuverability wise, visibility wise. Yeah, the brakes work great. Might as well top her off while we're here. Oh my god did you guys see that lady just there so this lady was coming through this dude was backing out he stopped because he saw her and uh, while she was flailing her arms in anger about him she I saw her looking at me and she was driving straight for another car that was passing through and then white locked up her brakes and missed it god people are so dumb why are people so dumb Uh, this thing's so maneuverable compared to the dually. I mean, that's probably pretty obvious, but trailer brakes feel great, though. I mean, this thing is stopping like as if there wasn't a trailer back there, which is exactly what we want. With just a little bit of throttle, this thing accelerates with traffic. I'll tell you right now, my dually requires 10 pounds of boost minimum to accelerate this quickly with this same trailer with the same amount of weight. This thing is freaking, oh. Not used to trucks needing a downshift though, I'll say that much. I'm 
completely pleased with the way this thing drives and tows. Completely pleased. Like I said, Subaru is probably about 2,800 pounds, 27, 2,800. So the Miata is like 2,400. So that's 300 pounds. We're probably going to be heavier than this for sure with two people in it and wheels and tires and tools. But I mean, it's doing this like, like it doesn't even care. It's not breaking a sweat. Doesn't feel like it's struggling power wise. Like it feels great. It feels great. Cool, let's head home and uh, try to knock some last little bit of TLC out on this thing. All right, Subaru's unloaded, trailer's parked, truck is back to living that so well. <laughs> Might take this thing to the grocery store tonight. So, a few more things that we'll need to mess with before the trip, but for right now, we need to jump onto the Miata. Like, it is what we're using and what we're driving at the event at Grid Life. So, like, we have to make sure it's done. I gotta rebuild my whole handbrake assembly. I gotta mount new wheels and tires and do, I gotta do a bunch of stuff. So I wanna get started on that. So we're gonna go ahead and call it for the truck stuff for now. We'll revisit this guy later. Like I said, there's plenty more stuff to do and then eventually we're gonna turbo it and you know, we'll be messing with it plenty more. And we might have our truck that we're gonna build sometime before grid life or probably right after it'll just depend on how things go i'm trying to figure out transportation so i'll update you guys on that when we actually get it and we have it here in our hands and uh the plan is secure and happening and there's no doubts that we're going to be able to find the vehicle I'm not going to get my hopes up or your hopes up or going into too much detail until then so that's going to be it for this video though thanks for watching thanks for subscribing i'll see you guys next time goodbye